Hi, this is 2.4, partition matrices. I like to call it chunks, or you might call it blocks. And what happens is that when we deal in the real world of big, big data, and you have to multiply two matrices together, you might want to chunk a big block of them because you might have the identity matrix showing up, or you might have a bunch of zeros showing up. If I take the zero matrix and multiply it by any other matrix, as long as the dimensions match up, I'm going to end up with all zero entries. If I have the identity matrix multiplied by another matrix, I'm going to end up with whatever that matrix was. And so we can block in order to make things a little bit easier. So let's look at M. I want to find M squared, as it says. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to partition this. Now, if you look at this matrix, do you see anything? Well, I hope that you see that we have this right here, this right here, what I just did was I partitioned off the identity matrix in the upper left-hand corner. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this matrix A, this one B, and this one C, and this one D. Now, is it going to be that much easier? Maybe, maybe not, but it will make it so that you understand what's going on if we have you know, thousands of rows by thousands of rows, what might make it a little bit easier for, for us and computer time. So if I want to calculate M squared, I already have this written out. I'm sorry about that, but I got it. So I'm just going to take the M and multiply by the M. And so with this chunks, as long as the dimensions hold true, I can just go ahead and multiply this like I normally would. So with this, the first matrix, I'm going to go across. The second matrix, I'm going to go down. And so when I multiply these things, I'm going to end up with my A times my A and then my B times my C. And then I'm going to multiply those together and I'm going to get A squared plus BC. Double check that, stop this if you have to, and make sure that that does make sense. First row, first column means my first row, first column of my resulting matrix. Then I can go over to the other one. Here's A, B, B, D. So I'm going to get A, B plus B, D. Similarly, C, A, and D, C is right here. And then C, B, D, D, D squared is going to be an, end up here. So what you do then is you have to go ahead and, and multiply these out. So here's where the simplicity maybe comes through a little bit. If I do take my A squared is simply the 3 by 3 identity matrix squared, which just will give me the identity matrix back. So when I want to calculate A squared plus BC, well, here's my BC right here. I'm going to take my B, which is right here, and then my C and multiply both of those two. And I hope you can tell that you get this. Now, if I add the identity matrix to this, I hope you can realize that we're going to end up with just this diagonal right here being bumped up by one. So now here is my A squared plus BC. Similarly, I can go on and do the AB plus BD, CA plus DC, and get it here, and then the CB plus D squared, and I'm going to end up with this right here. Go ahead and verify those three, and then make sure that my entries came out to be the same. Now, notice when you're multiplying by A times B, what am I going to get? Well, I'm just going to get B back again because A, once again, is my identity matrix that I have right there. So the idea of chunking or blocks with the partition matrices is to just make calculations a little bit easier if possible. It's not always possible, but if we have those identity matrices or a bunch of zeros, it is possible. So here's another example. Find A, B. So I give you the matrix A, which is a 3 by 5, and I'm going to partition it into these chunks. So I'm going to end up with a 2 by 3, 2 by 2, 1 by 3, and a 1 by 2. And then the B matrix over here, this one's going to be partitioned so that I'm going to end up with a 3 by 2. Notice I have 3 going across here that's going to match up pretty good with this. And so the dimensions still do have to match up. And a lot of times we'll help you with the partitions, but sometimes you'll have to look at it and figure it out. And then so I'm going to end up with B1 and B2. This is B1, this is B2. 
So if I multiply these in a little bit easier form, remember that I go across in the first matrix. So I'm going to go across here, across here, and then down for that multiplication. So I'm going to get A11, which is my upper left-hand matrix here. And I'm going to multiply by B1, A12, B2, and then add those two together. Similarly, I'm going to do those to get this here. Okay, so I've done this out for you. So I hope that you can kind of watch and see what this is. But I need the A11 times the B1, which is right here. And then the A12, which is this one right here, I'm going to multiply by the B2. This. So I highly recommend you multiply this out, and you'll find you get this. And then this one is this over here. Then you add those two together, and you're going to get your top matrix. Well, notice it's a two by two. And notice that th these dimensions do work out because I chose the partitions carefully. Then you can do a similar thing for this bottom. Why don't you try that and make sure that you can get the two one. If not, ask questions. But you've got to go through and try this in order to do this. Okay, now we got theorem 10. With theorem 10, column row expansion of AB. What these are, these are a bunch of um, partitions that you're dealing with. So A is an M by N and B is an N by P. Then we can take all the columns of A and then multiply them by all the rows of B. And then when we do that expansion, we're going to end up with this multiplication. It's each successive piece as we go along. As long as we started off with a 1 by n, and then we had a n by 1 column matrix that we're multiplying by. Now, what's the result? Well, with the result, we're going to end up with a, so we're going to end up with a m by p matrix in the end. Now, it looks like a 1 by 1 which it kind of is. However, we have all these little columns and rows that we're multiplying together. If I take a 1 by n here and multiply by n by 1, I'm going to end up with this 1 by 1. However, the columns of A, remember we're going to have this, is going to be my n. And when I multiply that here, this is going to cancel off my n's, and so I'm going to end up with a m by p. I hope that makes sense. So in a one by one, this is going to be in the block. But if we unblock it, it's going to be an M by P. Ask questions if that doesn't make sense. OK, so then a block diagonal matrix. This is a separate theorem that we can deal with. Uh, is a partition matrix with zero blocks off the my main diagonal. And then such a matrix is invertible if and only if each block on the diagonal is invertible. So that means that if we have something like this, this has to be invertible, this has to be invertible, and then these are zeros. Now, I didn't write out all the particulars about that. I'm talking about the blocks. But if this is the case, both of these are invertible, then the whole thing will be invertible. You can look at some of the questions that you do have in the practice and then try to sort it out. All right, I know I wrote a lot of this out previous, so I hope that you were able to try it yourself and get it to work. Practice gift there. Have a great day.